right. So I find myself for the first time in many years without a phone because I'm a, a Verizon customer and I can clean that out. They opened finally opened a store here in Slovakia, so I'm upgrading my phone. And in the process of doing so, it's going to take like two and a half hours. I didn't feel like waiting to get that done went into town and got all my other stuff done. There we go. And uh, picked up a couple of pipe wrenches so I'd have them. I don't, I don't own pipe wrenches. I haven't owned pipe wrenches in a long time. So I figured I'd pull this I got a auto adjustable one and I got a standard one. Because I found you never need to use one pipe wrench at a time, right? <laughs> Almost always use it two at once. I figured I'd go ahead and I'd pull this apart and uh, get the regulator off of here. See about picking up a tank regulator getting the propane stove working because I'd like to be able to start using this. Righty tighty lefty loosey. All right so I think the problem that I had before when everything went poof on this stove was um, because I have a pressure regulator here and I have a pressure regulator on the tank. Uh, and for whatever reason, the dual regulator thing just wasn't, wasn't having any part of it. regulator off of the stove, run a straight line in, and just run a pressure regulator off of my tank. See if that alleviates the problem. So I did the swap around with this one. So I turned it off so it's turned this around so that it is LP, but I, I think my issues are gonna be with this regulator. So what happened was I fired this up with the both both the regulators on there. I could not get any pressure to work in the line.
so it would uh, it wouldn't trigger any gas to come through at all with two regulators on. But with the one regulator on, even in the LP mode that I switched it over to, it uh, it didn't want to flow properly because natural gas is at a lower pressure at delivery than propane gas is. And I don't know the exact numbers. I'm sure if you want to know, you can, you can look that up. But that's why you have to get a conversion kit for something that is LP or that is natural gas, but you want it to be LP. Should have got a bigger pressure edge too. You know what? I got something that'll work. I was afraid of that. <laughs> That's going to leave a mark. Dang it. Jam a finger. Come off there, did it slip? Okay, looks good. Ouch. So this will screw right onto here, right, and then this, well, it fell, will screw right onto there, and then I bypass, I don't need this at all, um, because this was just to take it to the inside of this, right, so this regulator has a button on the top here. And I know you're not going to be able to see this, but I'll, you have to take my word for it. And on one side, on the inside here, it says LP, right? And then on the other side here, it says natural gas. So in the natural gas position, it needs to be up like this so it doesn't release as much gas going through. But in the LP position, it needs to be here so that when it it needs more pressure to open up that regulator and to keep the flow proper through there but i think that there is more than likely an issue with this regulator so i am going to go ahead and just pick up a tank regulator uh, which is i think a better call anyway because everything i'm going to run off of propane um, will come off of these lines uh, so i need to make sure that the regulator is functional. Uh, so I'll get a tank one. It'll be super easy because it's it's connected to the actual uh, screw in on the bottle um, and then I'll be ready to go uh, to plug this in and give it a test again. I want to cook in here uh, so that there's two issues that I have right now um, that basically make me say I'll keep the trailer here. One is uh, the refrigeration is the trailer. Um, it's got a propane refrigerator and freezer in there, and that's how I'm keeping my food refrigerated and frozen. But it's a hassle to walk back and forth, right? Uh, especially when it's pouring rain. So that's issue number one, but that will alleviate itself when the temperatures drop enough to where I can start freezing jugs outside again, and, and I just keep an ice chest in the kitchen temporarily um, until I get a refrigerator that I'll, I'll use in here. And uh, number two is the stove, right? I want to have an oven in here, and, and there's two reasons for that besides the walking back and forth. One is that I could get rid of this cooktop table and get rid of all this crap and just have this in here. Um, and I could start doing some work in the kitchen. And the other thing is uh, that when I'm baking stuff in here, and I like to bake, right? If you've looked at some of my previous videos, you know I like to cook and I like to bake. Uh, when I'm running the oven in here, it'll keep the house warmer so I don't have to run the heater and I don't have to worry about the wood stove. I did price out a heater today for the cabin. It's going to cost me about a thousand bucks, but that's very doable. Um, and there's no electricity required. It's 25,000 BTUs. Uh, and my, my thought is that I, I, I wanted to put one of these in anyway because I'll need a backup for the wood stove because uh, I'm gone from the house about 12 to 14 hours a day during work days. Um, so, you know, there's no way that, that with the firewood that we have in Alaska, there's no way that stove is going to keep the place warm 
uh, and I don't have somebody to come by and feed the, the fire for me. So my thought was that, you know, the wood stove will be the predominant form of heat, and then I'll have the uh, propane wall heater, the vented propane wall heater, that will uh, pick up whenever the, the stove dies down and, and can't keep everything warm. So it'll keep the temperature inside at about 60 degrees Fahrenheit, um, and then I don't have to worry about that. But anyway, got that off only at the cost of crunching my finger and a nice black and blue mark coming up underneath my finger now. And I got an hour or so before I can pick up um, my cell phone to transfer in all the data and I, I live on that thing so there's a ton of stuff on there to transfer over. Uh, so I might run into town and see about picking up the propane pressure regulator uh, for the tank. And then I need some pipe dope as well. Normally I would make myself a list but I don't have my phone to make my list with. Oh, well, we'll get that done anyway. Also, I'm kind of surprised that uh, it doesn't come up very much. But just for anybody who might be concerned with open flame stuff in here, I did pick up a fire extinguisher today uh, at the orange store for inside. So I'll go ahead and mount that. I just haven't decided where I'm going to mount that yet. I haven't decided if I'm going to mount that over here. Um, over there, I, I, you know, I want to mount it somewhere where I can get to it, but I don't think it'll be a good idea to mount it behind the wood stove. Uh, so, yeah, got that taken care of. So we'll get that mounted and hung up as well. And then, I don't talk about it very much because uh, it's really not my thing. But I do have an Amazon wish list, and I get people all the time that ask what they can do to help with the channel. And uh, I just direct them to that. It's down in the bottom of the show notes, but I wanted to put a special thank you out there to Scott from Hester's Garage because he hooked me up with a... 2200 watt pure sine wave inverter, uh, which is super, super awesome. And Scott's been just slaying it. He, I can always be guaranteed that Scott, every couple of months, is going to send me a big bag of coffee. <laughs> but this time he went above and beyond. Um, so little stuff that I think would be very helpful I throw on there on a regular basis, like these uh, USB LED lights that I got um, that are rechargeable, uh, which are super, super awesome. I usually keep one here and I keep one upstairs, right? Different shades of light on it and then off. Um, but that is going to be a big game changer because my idea for a refrigerator is going to go is an actual just house commercial or a regular residential refrigerator because they're so efficient now um, that with a bat with a semi decent battery bank um, I can run one for quite a while uh, off of this inverter um, without having to worry about the solar issues that. Um, plague Alaska during winter. Uh, during the summer, I'll never have to worry about charging the batteries again because I'll have solar panels set up uh, either this fall, more than likely this fall, or for sure first thing in the spring next year as the sun starts to come up and we start to get it high enough on the horizon where it'll make a difference. Uh, but modern refrigerators are very energy efficient. Uh, so that's more than likely what I'm going to end up with in here. And especially with the amount of time I spend, you know, when you're by yourself, you're, you're usually not opening and closing the refrigerator unless you are um, doing something. You're putting something in there or you're taking something out. Uh, unlike when I had kids, and for those of you that have littles around the house or have had littles around the house, man, they'll stand there with the door open all day long. And I never knew, never realized until I got older why my dad would say, shut the door. There's nothing in there now that wasn't there yesterday. <laughs> But yeah, so that uh, that will be the one electric appliance that I'll probably use on a regular basis. But with this power inverter, um, it's it'll be a big game changer for me. It really will. I've got to do a lot of work in here electrically to get things situated and sorted. I do want a couple of outlets in the kitchen uh, just because it would be nice to have them, um, even though I don't really have any electrical appliances. And the electrical appliances that most people would use, like toasters or that kind of stuff, uh, would really burn a whole lot of power for me. I don't I don't foresee myself using those down the road. Like I said, the heater that I want to do on the wall um, won't require any electricity at all. Um, it's electric electricity free. Uh, so the only thing I'll really have to worry about is the refrigerator and then a couple of outlets in there, maybe for a charging block or an extra additional light here or there. But my lighting in the cabin is more than likely going to stay all 12 volt at this point just because I get quite a bit of light from them. And I haven't even installed most of the lighting. I mean, I only have one light in the kitchen right now. I'm planning on two more on either side, uh, which will brighten that thing up like a freaking like daylight in there. Um, and then the bathroom is going to have all the can lights, but it's going to be a lot of stuff working on winter projects or inside projects this winter, including the railing for up top, uh, which for whatever reason, I just really haven't started yet.
What did you have to say? Really? Timmy fell in the well? Oh my goodness. No way. <laughs> Everybody's coming running over. Hello, ladies. Hello. I still have a lot to do um, to get ready for winter, but I'll show you. I've got, I'm looking back here right now as I'm getting ready to walk back here with you, and I see lumber that I should just get all stacked up. But let's show you what I got done. All right, got the garbage out of here. Like I said, I got to come by here and pick up all this wood. I might do that. I'm still waiting for the uh, dinner to finish cooking up here. All the Tyvek, all the trash is out of here. Shove the tarp up underneath there, the good tarp. I still have to, uh, that piece of Tyvek right there I have a, a plan for. Um, I still have to get this tie par out, so I might work on that too because the tie par is going to go on the ground from basically the front of the cabin here all the way up to uh, just where it drops off on the driveway there. And then I'm going to... I'm going to bring gravel in. I'm thinking at least two, if not three loads of gravel. So the tie part is going to come like right to, you know, right, right to here all the way up. And then it's going to go all the way back. And then I'm going to gravel up to the stairs on both sides so that I have a dry area to walk. I don't have the same issue happening next year that I had happening this year. Uh, but pile's ready to go. I'm not going to take it today, obviously, because I got dinner cooking in the stove and I don't want to leave it. So we'll get that done. I'm thinking maybe two loads to do here and half of the driveway and then a third load and i'm looking at 185 dollars a load uh for inch minus which means uh the rocks will be one inch or smaller um, in the gravel that i order uh, the nice thing is that he can spread it i don't know how much spreading he's going to be able to do in here though uh and then pat's got a skid steer down the road so i can pay him a couple of bucks to come over and level everything out but if you look in the driveway um, you can see right down the middle here where everything is really, um, uh, as level as it always was. And then on both sides of the middle, you can see where I drive all the time. And that's what I'm after this year is I just want to, I want to add some more gravel to that to get everything all leveled out. Maybe slope it off to this way here, um, so that when it melts, it'll all go off to one side or the other. Uh, but not slope it too much because then it's an issue of sliding off. But it'll be easier to get the snow blower in here and clean everything off if I've got all the gravel in here. Through that metal roof temporarily on top of the pile over there. I don't know when I'm going to get to it to cut it up for Will. But I really wanted to get this area all cleaned out because it's really, I mean, it's just a mess. And I, I can't stand that. So dinner's going to be ready here pretty quick. I'll take you through the rest of that. A little mashed potatoes on here. meat on here. A lot of times I'll serve this over brown rice and uh, just layer all of this on top of the brown rice, but tonight I was feeling like mashed potatoes. <laughs> Put butter on that bad boy. A little bit of gravy. I'm just going to take the meat that's left over here and I'm going to put it right in that gravy and then tomorrow night I'll make myself some rice, bring that pot back in and heat it back up again.
<clears throat> That's my alarm for taking it out. It was actually done, uh, took about two and a half hours to get this whole thing done. Let's give it a little taste, shall we? It's pretty much fork tender. Man, that stuff is delicious. Mm -mm. So tomorrow I'll dig out the tie par, kind of get that rolled out to where it's going to go. And then uh, get the truck loaded up, make a quick run to the dumps. I didn't want to do it today while the oven was going in the trailer. Better safe than sorry, right? Mm. 